Hola, welcome back to Bex Hill West. Thank you for joining me. Now I know someone's going to comment in the complaint section all about the music I've just played and I'm afraid that's what happens when you think of a thumbnail before you've generated any content. Anyway, that being said, hopefully from that little musical introduction you've got a handle on what today's video is all about. Now for anybody who's new and hasn't seen my previous videos, basically the context of this is that I've got a number of hand-built turnouts to install and these things are a little bit finer than the sort of regular off-the-shelf type of unit and these things I think require a little bit of sympathy should we say mechanical sympathy in order that they're going to operate correctly so I've tried to develop a system that I think is going to work nice and smoothly and, and, and sort of be sort of sympathetic to the units that I'm installing so that's the background to the project now I'm also going to introduce today an electronic control system that I've come across. Now this thing is absolutely brilliant and the gentleman who makes these are really really clever. Um, so simple to use and we'll have a little look at that and we'll see how well this just makes the installation of the actual mechanism that I've come up with really easy. Now as an aside I actually I tried one or two other electronic control systems and had some ideas around what I thought such a system needed to do and I'd actually commissioned somebody to design and uh, you know program such a thing for me. I, I started myself but it was I realized I was going to sort of spend far too much time on it so I actually commissioned somebody to do it and no sooner had I kind of set that ball in motion that I then discovered these and this thing is absolutely brilliant so we'll have a good look at this um, I think many of you have not come across this before will probably enjoy seeing how simple it is to operate anyway before we get into setting it all up I'll, I'll run through some of the basic design revisions or improvements from last time and we'll see how it all works so then as a reminder and for the benefit of anybody who's not seen my previous videos i put on screen the basic design now this obviously uses a straightforward sg90 servo as i believe most similar types of mechanism do um, but unlike the majority of the others that i've seen rather than it sort of having a, a quasi reciprocating output that's kind of generated through the oscillating motion of the, an arm swinging on the servo. This one uses a, an eccentric and the eccentric sheave is the sliding piece that, that actually actuates the, the turnout. Now the reason I've done that is so we get a perfect reciprocating motion. There's no kind of upward forces on the, um, the drive pins to the turnout that might cause the you know the fine scale hand-built turnout to sort of you know get, have a little problem or get upset with itself so that was what I wanted and I think that's what's been achieved there's one or two other little design nuances that we can have a look at when this thing is set up um, but that's basically where I'm coming from I wanted something that would be dead smooth now another reason for developing my own and um, rather than sort of buying one firstly is I just like making stuff as most viewers of this channel know by now I'd rather make something and even if it's not very good I'd rather make it than, than buy it um, but the, the real reason for doing it was I wanted to come up with something that I could make I'm going to potentially need dozens of these things so I wanted to be able to the hundredth one I make to work just as reliably as the first so I've invested the time in kind of I, I think perfecting this now so that later on as I need more I can just make them and I know they're going to work so that's the basic design concept now I originally when I first showed this I didn't include any micro switches and that's because I was going to use relays I thought that would be a, a very elegant way of doing the polarity switching at the frog um, but several people said no it should have switches on and then some people said it should have two switches so I've done a, a variation on the same design so there's no switch there's one switch there's two switches um, and the basic servo mount the geometry of it is identical across all three so if I fit one intending to use a relay uh, with no micro switch fitted and then I change my mind later I can just swap the unit out and the screw holes and the holes I would have drilled in the baseboard and everything will all be identical so I can I could chop and change and change my mind as we go along so that seemed like a, a good bit of 
for planning. Okay, let's mount one up on a sort of a, a demo board and we can see how straightforward it is to set up. And so it's on to the installation. Now what I've done here is I've made a little template and this is on the top of the baseboard. Obviously I'm just using a, a bit of wood as an example. And for this demonstration I'm going to use the very first turnout that I made that you saw me making a, a few videos back. So I'm using just a little, well I'm using my scriber here just to mark those holes from the template and I'm marking onto the top of the baseboard. Um, not much more to it than that. Made some holes and then off camera I drilled those holes and you can see it here this is now underneath the baseboard obviously and I'm just screwing it down. Now those screw holes are slightly slotted so there's provision for a little bit of movement on that thing you can adjust it if necessary but I'm just going to leave it kind of set in its middle position and I will nip those screws up tighter later on. So there we go I'm going to flip it over and now it's time to fit the operating pins. Now in this case I'm using some little bits of brass rod and a bit tricky to do here the camera angle is such that I couldn't see through the holes but what I wanted to demonstrate was you can pop these in from the top once the thing is screwed up underneath. I struggled to see where this hole was. I was kind of doing it blind because I had the camera in the way. But anyway, there we go. So you can see those pins are now installed. And I'm going to drop my turnout on. Now, this is not my final configuration. This is just... Uh, I don't think I'm going to use this turnout. It's not fine enough. But just as a kind of a little gash setup, I'll just drop that on there. And the tie bar or stretcher bar, call it what you will, um, it's got two holes in it, one at each end. Now if I was using a, a Pico point here that had one operating pin then obviously I would just fit one pin and we'll have a look at that set up in just a minute. Now the important thing here is to keep the blades um, switched over to the left hand rail. doesn't matter whether it's a right hand or a left hand turnover, keep it set to the left hand side. Hopefully this image shows you what I mean. So then before I show this sort of installed properly. Let's have a look at a prototype here and the control system. Now I've got the power coming into the control board and I've got a push switch here. For the moment I'm just using one servo which is simply just plugged into the board. If I press the button, hopefully you can see the output of the slider. Now what's really great about this mechanism is that there are two controls. So if I, for example, I can adjust this here and this will change the amount of throw on the controller from nothing through to its full range of movement. So when I initially came up with this idea, I imagined having different offsets on the eccentric to account for different throws of different turnouts. But with this controller it's not necessary. It simply can just be adjusted like so. Though it really couldn't be easier. Now I've seen other servo controllers where you've got to sort of program the throw and, and some of which require a separate programming board that plugs in. And, and to be honest with you, I looked at the Pico system and just the, the manual alone had me baffled. So this I really love, I think this is straightforward. Now there's one other control on here, so we've got a control for the throw of servo 1, 2, 3 and 4. And finally this one here controls the speed. So if I wind it fully to the left, hopefully you can see this thing is moving really slowly. If I wind it fully to the right, it'll operate at its fastest speed. This I think is genius. So I'm going to just turn that and put it to its mid position.
So now we can see the movement. Hopefully um, we can now have a look at the installation that I've just shown you and you'll see the adjustments that I'm going to make and how simple they are. Okay, so let's see the setup in action. And what I've done is I've replaced my hand-built turnout with a double O gauge Pico example, uh, simply because, well, I thought it'd be interesting to see it working on sort of a, a different setup, but it's basically the same, but I've just got a single drive pin. So set up just as I described before with the switching rails up against the sort of the left hand uh, rail here as we're looking at this thing. Okay, now to begin with, the controller is set to the minimal rotation position for servo one. And if we have a look at the blades, we could see there's a gap there. If I switch the thing, it's not moving because it's on its minimum throw. So with a screwdriver, I'm going to carefully dial this in so I can wind this across and hopefully you could see the blades moving. And so we could set that to wherever we want them to be. I could set it halfway if I wished. So we set the amount of throw and we can dial that in absolutely perfectly. And that's it. That's all that's required to set this thing up. The left hand throw as we look at this it was set mechanically with the installation of the unit underneath and the right hand switch has been has been done simply by that control so let's press the button and see what happens there we go simple now that's on its slowest setting with this control on the end here, if I wind that fully clockwise, that will speed it up. So this is its fastest setting. And once more, let's do that nice and slow. For those of you who want something that's really slow. Now I think that's a little bit too slow, so I'm going to set that in the middle. So that's it for each of the four servos that can be connected to this controller. We have one control that sets the total travel of the, 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 the tie bar, and then this control on the end controls the speed of all of them, and I would presume that you'd want all of your turnouts operating at the same speed. So then, I think that just about wraps it up. I think we covered most of the details, except to mention just one other thing. There are outputs from the servo control board, which will drive LEDs on a mimic panel or, or even relays if you want to control your frog polarity with relays. And I've just put a quick bit of footage up here and you'll see that I've threaded the LEDs temporarily into the mounting holes of the mount, but you can just see it, see it working. Really simple. Now there is a second style of controller and that's this one here. This one works on DCC. I've not had a chance to play with this one yet but I will do it. I'll do a full review of, of both of these um, in the coming weeks. Now I have to say it just because this is on the internet and people will question me. Is this sponsored content? No, not at all. I bought these um, as an experiment. And delighted with them and it's really nice to promote them here and hopefully the fellow enthusiast who is producing these will you know get a bit more traction on his website so if you're interested in those it's dcc-decoders.com and the gentleman who puts them together Zabby is a really nice helpful guy now that said I have ordered 
a batch of them from Zabby um, and I intend to make these servo mounts available on my website and I thought well if I, I like the controller so I'll, I bought a load of those in and I will offer a, like a little package deal to save people kind of shopping around it will make the postage a bit cheaper as well anyway all of that will be up on the website probably in the next week although stuff won't be available to ship until probably mid-march so a little bit of a wait time to save up um, anyway i'll be delighted to hear your thoughts in the comments and i look forward to seeing you next time oh one other thing just literally moments ago i took a phone call about something really very interesting that some viewers of this channel might have thought i'd forgotten about well nothing gets forgotten about it just maybe goes on a back burner but you may recall the turntable at Robertsbridge where there's been some really exciting news about that but I'm going to save it till next time so stay tuned and I'll see you then cheerio <laughs>